Well, here we go. You just sit tight over there, my friend, because it's a Saturday night. Uh, we usually record this. Uh, we usually sleep on it. We're not sleeping on it today, my friend. But the Nick Bob podcast is brought to you by, uh, by, by a handful of uh, great, great companies, one of which is Pella Windows and Doors. Uh, they... They want high quality windows in every single. What are you? What are you grinning at here? <laughs> you're just trying. You're trying to bring some positivity. <laughs> I love Pella, man. Yeah. They're great. They're fantastic. Okay. <laughs> want a window into your soul? Pella will provide that window for you. Call the Omaha Lincoln Showroom or go to PellaOmaha.com to find out you can get a hundred bucks and new windows and doors starting at one hundred twenty-two dollars a month. That's Pella Omaha. Dot com. We're also brought to you by the Brickway Cuts Bike, Lucky Bucky Familet, uh, Lucky Bucket Family. Excuse me. We got uh, the bourbon here. We got whiskeys here. Maybe a little too tempting right now. We need to. We need to stay. We need to. We need to. We need to. We need to stay level headed here. I did have had uh, the whole fam over. Mom, Dad, my brother, his whole family. We sat by the fire pit. My brother and I had a nice Brickway bourbon last night by the fire pit. Nice. It was just. It was delicious, man. It was absolutely delicious. So check them out in Omaha. Uh, shouts out to the Brickway Cuts by Lucky Bucket family. And we're brought to you by Peerless Energy Systems for any and all air compressor needs. Peerless Energy Systems has you covered. Go to peerlessenergy.com. All right. Bo is here. We are recording this on a full, like, we usually record Sunday afternoon, Sunday mid morning. We are recording this on a Saturday night, it is eight o'clock. I have to travel on Sunday. College basketball duties start. I'm heading to Chicago. You were kind enough to be accommodating, so we're recording this. Usually, we get to sleep on it. We get to we, we get to maybe rewatch some of the game. We get to like collect our thoughts, maybe gauge what old Tom should tell things. Or hey, what's this guy think? Maybe you call some people. I call some people. This is no. This is just Nick. An old of rule of thumb. I think I remember hearing like Abraham Lincoln used to do this. Oh boy. Like if you were upset at somebody, you'd write like a you'd write the letter, like the letter that you want to send. You put it in your drawer, and the next day you decide if you're going to mail. You don't mail it that night. You mail it the. You, if you're going to mail it, you're going to mail it the next day. Okay. And most of the time, you never mail it, right? And for us, this is a little bit. This, this could little, be. We are mailing a letter this. We to, might this be evening. mailing that letter right now. Well, here's what and it maybe is. Maybe we shouldn't. So let's be careful. Well, here, here's you know what it is. <laughs> I've I've you've heard me say this before. I think one of the you hear this at every wedding. Not every wedding, but like 90% of weddings, the maid of honor or someone gives something of like, you know what? The best advice I can give you is never go to bed angry. No, like that. Ju- that's in disagreement no. with what Abe Lincoln. I think like go to bed angry, wake up the next day, see if you're still angry, yeah. then fight. OK, yeah. You know what if I mean? You're going to say the thing you were going to say last night. You you mean it in the morning. Yeah. Yes. OK, so same thing with Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln writes letters. He puts them in a box and he wakes up the next day. Then he sees what is. What what the deal is, I mean, Nick? Are we just gonna? We're so gonna we're going to bed. We're, we're we're apparently we're gonna we're we're letting it all hang out here. Yeah. Nebraska loses twenty seven to twenty <laughs> to UCLA. Um, god damn man, that, that devastating loss. Like I, I mean, I I don't even know where to begin. I do. We want to just start with the offense. Do you want to talk about the offense? Well, yeah, I do. I I, I mean, I I'm I don't know to talk to anybody about this. So. Am I wrong in saying is in some ways is this loss worse than the Indiana loss? Funny you say I it's one of the first things I wrote down after the game of just like sometimes I read out like questions. One of the first things I wrote down was like, is this maybe worse? I thought we looked in a way worse. I, maybe I'm wrong, but in, like we in looked, particular in the first half. Yeah. That was as bad. It's a miracle that the score somehow is only 13 to 7 yeah. at halftime. That's what I mean. Like, but that's as bad bad as nebraska has looked offensively he, here's the nebraska if it wasn't for ucla's what was it four bonehead yeah. on sportsmanlike conduct penalties nebraska wouldn't have pissed a drop offensively especially in the first half yeah. there were the one the, the their very first one they Dylan gets sacked. Nebraska's going to go back to back three and outs. There were boo birds. Yeah. And then the very next play, they air it out to Ja'Cory Barney, which that was a duck of a throw. And I don't know. That was a horrible play by the UCLA defensive back to not at least bat it down or pick it. Yeah. Barney catches it. And then Nebraska is able to, to get points out of it. But you, you looked at the, the, the first, here were the first half stats 
uh, they were just horrific. Uh, UCLA total yards, 248, Nebraska, 71. Keep in mind, 40 of those 71 yards came on that Barney pass off the yeah. the the penalty. For UCLA, 6 of 10 on third down. Nebraska had held Ohio State to 1 of 10 on third down the week before. Nebraska was 1 for 5 on third down. Time of possession, UCLA doubled them up, 20 minutes, 45 seconds. Nebraska, 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Dylan Rayola was 3 for 7 for 47 yards. Again, 40 of those were one play yeah. to Ja'Cory Barney. Yeah. Okay? And... The UCLA quarterback, Garbers, who was a baller today, 15 of 19, 149 yards in the first half. Like, so yes, just circle back. Like, that first half felt just as bad. We almost didn't, yeah, we almost didn't have the ball in the first quarter. Like, we had three plays and we just basically were like, yep. And like, if you don't know sort of the, the build up to, to this game and like how well we played against Colorado. And we were kind of like this, you know, we're kind of a revamped team a little bit and UCLA's in the, I mean, they just were struggling. They were a disaster to start the year. Right. If you didn't know those things and you just were like, what's football's on, huh? I don't know who's playing. Who are these teams? I don't know. And you just watched the, the white team versus the red team, right? Like who looked like a better team today? Like you go a position by position. They looked like their defense looked better than our defense, yep. right? Their offense looked better. Like our quarterback looked better than our quarterback. Their receivers looked better than our receivers. Yep. So I guess I'm going like, what happened? What happened to us? I, I don't know. I know. No, <laughs> I don't know. You're right. I mean, they, and then because the last piece of that is they looked what, better coached. Yes. I think UCLA. I, yeah. I mean, they, I, their UCLA was two and five heading into this game. With a first, not a, a first year head coach that is a first time head coach yes. in his seventh game or eighth game ever. And he came in and against Matt Rule and Tony White and Marcus Satterfield just straight worked them. And if it's not for those unsportsmen, like, I don't know, that's where the game is like when I say this game could have been like, yes. no, it you're right, could have been bad. The unsportsman like plays really changed a lot of the course of the game and gave us it gave us a lot of life when we were doing ourselves no favors beyond that like if it was just like a straight up game without those calls like i don't know where that game goes yeah because if it was either three or it, it was so th their three of their unsportsmanlike conduct penalties led, led to, to touchdowns yeah. for nebraska so yeah you can say like you can draw you can connect those dots pretty pretty simply I I think so. We're we're starting like big picture. You're talking about like yeah. how you just turned on. And you don't know. I think I think the thing that is so frustrating and disheartening for Nebraska fans it, right now is I think everybody is tired. I know him. I'm tired of the culture talk and the process talk and the the. All, I'm tired of all that talk and the patience talk and all that stuff. But that's more a product of 20 years of just yeah. of, of it all, right? Yeah. Just because you're tired of something doesn't make it wrong, yeah. you know, like or make make what that person's saying. It doesn't make Matt Rule wrong. Yeah. But I think the thing that I'm struggling with, and I imagine a lot of people are, is as Sip always puts it, it's it's hard to sell the notion of progress. Yeah. I think that's not only today, it, but this season. And then when you zoom out, we're 21 games or 22 games into the Matt Rule era. Are they getting better? Well, this, this is the problem, right? So the problem with this year, how it's going, it's not that, hey, our guys aren't good enough or whatever. It's like we actually put out a performance against Colorado, who's a decent team. Clearly, yeah. They're decent, right? We looked a certain way. I saw the way our defense moved. It was crisp. It was defined. It was attacking, right? Our offense was like Dylan was, seemed like he was operating – and he, he looked a certain way. They had a lot looked, of weapons. It looked a certain way. Yeah. Like to me, it's all about it looked a certain way. Something happened after the bye week. And we we like have regressed now in a weird way. Like our, you know, we, we played a little bit better against Ohio State. I think we like yeah. turned it on again. And then we like regressed further. Like we really are not looking the same. And I just, that's my problem more than anything. Like when we talk about progress, well, I'm going, well, I'm looking at these guys. I saw progress against Colorado and I've seen regression from that moment in the way we move in the, def like the definition of how we're playing and scheming and 
Like it all looks different to me. Yeah. And I don't know what to attribute that to. I don't. Yeah. Cause you, there is a feeling, there is a feeling you have watching. So the beauty of the sports, there can both be like, it's a bottom line business there. It's a results-based business. You can look at that. You can look at stats. You can look at wins and losses and be able to come to a tangible, like this is progress or this isn't, or yeah. this looks good or this doesn't. But there is an element of like how something feels. I ask all of you right now, how do you feel watching this football program right now or that football team right now? It doesn't feel right. It, it like you say it looks different it it looks different to me and i don't i can't explain why right. it's different so yeah i mean it, it, the season's long and people get beat up but like we look it just looks like a slower defense you agree and you know and, and then, then all the of a sudden offensively like, it's like the most un there's okay there's should we, should we get into the offense well yeah okay yeah. there's a, there's a lot well hold on well, before we get into the office one last side is we're going big picture in this thing i would you, you said okay they looked a certain way against against Colorado, and and I agree. Like if you you turn on that film and then watch that game today, it looks like two different football teams. Yeah, but I would even I, I'm also like I'm always trying to see the big picture of this thing. I could argue they were at this time last year they were better last year because at least one side of the ball was crazy consistent yeah. the defense i don't understand these ro the roller coaster of the defense of the last three weeks yeah so that's the scary thing is like are they that much better than they were a year ago i, I don't i don't necessarily think they are right now which that is scary but to turn it back to the offense this is a head scratcher because Nebraska is not super duper talented on offense right like they're they're not it's not like just littered with stars everywhere but they're talented enough to be better than this yeah i don't i, I am perplexed with the regression and how bad this offense is like so heading into today so not including today's game but heading into today nebraska had scored two touchdowns in the last 10 quarters five different halves this year nebraska has been shut out from a touchdown Colorado second half Purdue first half Rutgers second half Indiana second half Ohio State first half that is 10 whole quarters without scoring a touchdown yeah and again they're an unsport uh, they're an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty away from getting shut out in the first half and who the hell knows what happens in the second half I am just trying to understand what again I'm not crazy in, in thinking that, you know, Banks is Michael Irvin and Nayer is Randy Moss and, and yeah. Dowdell is Amir Abdul. I'm not, I, I understand that, but both they should be better than this. I mean, I think the elephant in the room is coaching and scheme, uh, but they, they shouldn't be this inept on offense. Yeah. I mean, th there's clearly some issues with, with what we're doing. I mean, it just, my sort of my natural takeaway was like I just seemed like it was very random what we are what we're calling and win felt more random it didn't feel like we had a cohesive plan like like solid identity we're gonna do this we're gonna stick with our like with our you know the the thing we want to do to attack them that we think is like attacking like it didn't feel like we were attacking to me you know it felt mm -hmm. like we were just like calling plays and seeing what happened and it didn't feel like we were protecting dylan um and setting you know setting our guys up for success really you know does that make sense like yeah it just felt like we were just going out there and calling plays and they were dictating they were blitzing they were blitzing a lot right yes. they were bringing pressure right at dylan i think that's a good strategy on dylan like taking a blitz at him makes him move gets him off his mark he's not super mobile right so it's a good it was good good job by them they were like standing up moving around shifting a lot a good strategy but we didn't adjust at all to that right so maybe if they're doing that we need to run at them like and, and you know make them pay the price for doing those type of things mm -hmm. that's how you beat teams like that right like if you're going to do a bunch of junk we need to make you pay for that right and that means either get the ball out really quick on plays because dylan can't hold it if they're bringing everybody or you got to run it one of the two that's it yep you can't drop back and stand around that's what we're doing. We we're like, right. we were kind of doing like seven step drop type. <laughs> I was like, no, they're bringing the house, like get it out or run the ball. And we just didn't 
seem to be able to adjust to that. No. And Rule even said in the first half, they asked him in the press conference, like, what was the issue in the first half in particular? And he said tons of all out zero, like zero coverage blitz. Yeah. Like they were just, and and they didn't they didn't handle it uh and I, but I, there I see my problem right now is I I click back and forth and this is a game recap pod so I need to focus like on the game but I click back and forth of like big picture today big picture today what I don't understand is remember a year remember when when Mar Marcus Satterfield was hired and all that stuff remember the whole like we're on a crusade for the huddle like you remember yeah. he was talking and and they're going to be use a fullback and all and all that and they're going to be a physical running team. They go get Jeff Sims who is a running quarterback. Yeah. And then they go get Danny Kalen and Dylan Raiola, which couldn't be more different from Jeff Sims and and what that picture was. And so I guess I I, I sit here and I'm like I you, you can't be a year and a half into this thing, and I have no idea what they want to they what they want to be offensively, or what they're trying to do offensively yeah. at all, and that that's a a concerning and a frustrating thing, um, because like you you look at you you look at at Dylan Raiola look at Dylan Raiola's stats here. Last okay, so first five games of the season. Dylan Ryle, a 70% completion percentage. He threw for 1,224 yards, nine touchdowns, zero interceptions. Last three and a half games, 57%, so I guess now four games, 57% completion percentage, 567 yards, zero touchdowns, five interceptions. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a he, serious regression. It's a serious regression. I mean, it's like it, you could call it a freshman slump for Dylan, but there's something with, you know, like, I don't want to put it all on Dylan. Either. I don't like, either. I think this is like, this is a, uh, a strategic thing. Like we're, we're not putting him in a great spot. We need to get him in a position where like he can manage the game and he's not like, he's been running around too much a little bit. Like, I feel like he's, we're getting away from what we did to start the year out, which was like very controlled. It was he a very a, controlled atmosphere. I feel like it can be, we can sit here and say that I like, I'm still all in on Dylan and, but he's not looked good. And no. what and whether and whether it's it, it, it's it, you know it's always it's always a combination of things. It's always a little bit of the the line and the receivers and the run game and the and the play calling and the scheming and all those things that impact how you look. But he's not looked very good. And I, the the obviously the play that really broke the bat. There are two plays that broke the bat. The pick six to start the second half. Yeah. Is like, oh, this game is complete. Like, whatever, this game is over. And then their play action bomb, fifty yard touchdown was like, oh, this game's really over. Yeah. Uh, but even even like, well, hold on, we'll stick with Dylan here. I was surprised, and Twitter's for knee jerk reaction, freak out. Like, even before he got hurt and and had to come out of the game, there were people calling for him to get pulled. No, I, I would disagree with that. I would disagree. I, I think disagree people are with that. I, I mean, like, I'm I'm very concerned that he's not going to play in the next game, right? Like, right. That's not what we want. Like, he's still a better option. He throws a better ball. He has like a better understanding of the like natural understanding of the game. He's just in sort of a slump for him. I like if you look at you 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 gave the stats. I mean, he had great great numbers to start. He was the incredible year. to it start was the year. The efficient kind of quarterback we've always wanted, right? And something's happened the last three games. You just four games where we said like he's finally pressing. You see him pressing. He's staring down receivers a little bit more. He seems a little more less certain of where he wants to go with the ball. He's dealt with more pressure. People are getting him off his spots. Like there's a lot of things happening that he's just not playing because of. But like, let's not for a second think that the answer is like less Dylan. Like, no, no, I, that's not the answer. The answer is like we've got to. He's still young. He's probably not ready to just say, throw it all on his back. He'll carry us in, and win any game, right? He's not there yet. We've got to protect him. And that means run the ball, play action. You got to do some gimmicky things to just like get easy yards. I think our first down offense is our biggest problem because if we could just figure out a way to get some better, easy yards on first down, then we're in less of these bad situations for Dylan. Yeah. Right? We need to have a better first down and get the thing rolling, and then we're then we're a team. But like, 
I don't know. I feel like Dylan threw that pick six, right? The next drive, we ran it like six times in a row and we were very effective. And I was like, oh, there's our offense, right? Why don't we try to do that every, any other time of the game? Like, I, but that, but that's what's so weird about even it, even the, the down, on the on their goal line stand. Yeah, it's first and goal at the ten. Dowdell runs it well to the five, so now it's second and goal at the five. Yeah, you're going to go. You're going to you you're you're going to go for it there. So you have three downs to get five yards. And again, Matt Rule talks about we want to be a physical team. We want to run the ball. What do they do on those three downs? Pass, pass, pass. They throw a fade to Banks. I didn't like the fade. The, fade, the second down fade call it, was just a cop it's a out. Throw it's, away. it's a throwaway, it's a throwaway play. play. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not against the fade if you've got the, the matchup in the room. We didn't have the matchup. We didn't have room. They had like the guy basically doubled. Like they're all over him. So like it's not there and it's a wasted play then. And then I still the fourth and goal play. Were they trying to run a a pick? Alex Bullock pick for Carter Nelson? Yeah. So they're trying to roll left with a right-handed quarterback. Yeah. And they're going to take their blocking wide receiver and have him run a pick play for a true freshman tight end with the motherfucking game on the like that's the game. Yeah, and, he, and like, like, like he's not getting a whole lot of snap. Like it, it goes back to your Saban line, and it's it, like that's that's poof. well. But you said you, you uh, one time we talked about like I don't understand these. It's not that we're anti Carter Nelson or anti even giving the ball to you know Harburg and so it's these big moments like wow really your game best of the line player wow. Okay, that and, and by the way, that was out of a timeout. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. You, really, game on the line. Not Nair, not Fedoni, yeah. not Banks, not Barney. You're gonna go Alex Bullock and Carter Nelson. It's games on the line. Game on the line. That's what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just interesting, man. It's interesting that, and I don't like critiquing specific plays that much, but like. Game on the line. I just, man, it's, it feels like we are searching for anything to be like, we just don't feel dangerous in offense right now. Like, no. I feel like it, we don't threaten people anywhere. And I, and I'm, it's just, it's hard for me to understand why Nebraska can't get a few guys to, you know, that are I just dangerous. Like, I, I just look at it, I go, if you just look at it individually, Fedoni, he's not, I mean, certainly, like, I have him in Canton, but like, yeah. He's good. Like, yeah. Fedoni's not a bad player. No. Uh, Ja'Cory Barney, pretty good. Isaiah Nair, I've seen a lot worse wide receivers in my life. Uh, you know, you, you go, Dow, Dowdell, he's not terrible. I mean, he's not great. He's not terrible. And then, like, pretty good. But yet, this offense is bad like statistically oh it's, it's just so i don't i, I don't our red zone off it's like it's, I, I i feel like man was that hard to get in the end zone we got in the end zone a couple times but god it felt hard well even the one that they scored someone i should have wrote it down it took they got it to first and goal at the nine took three or four and it took plays three and or an and it, took, <laughs> it took three or four plays an unsport it took three or four plays an unsportsmanlike penalty in three or four minutes for them to finally score that's what i'm saying like the game is different if we don't have to run off a few extra minutes like we just it's too hard everything's too hard like you know we play these teams and it doesn't feel like i mean ucla just scored on a like the qb ran for 80 and then it's like you know it's it does we're not making it hard like we're making it so hard on our offense to like get in. It's just like, it shouldn't be that hard. It's just, and I wish I knew it, the guys are rarely running wide open. Uh, there's just a couple of times where I, I thought I found myself numerous times with B enemy calling plays, like thinking to myself, like, man, what a great play call. Yeah. And I just wish I was saying the same thing for Nebraska, but it is, uh, it's, the the offense is because like last year last year you kind of understood it and you and you excused it a little bit you go okay you gotta muck it up yeah you, I mean. and you go okay 
Jeff Sims, you missed on him. It happens. You never bat a thousand percent on these people. You missed on him. All of your top receivers and running backs got hurt. You're trying to patch it together and you and you made it work. I was I don't really ever think you and I were all that critical of Marcus. I I, I was like, whatever. I, I actually I agreed with a lot of what he had in Harburg, you run it, you muck it up, you hold the ball, you take a couple game you, out. You, everyone like a couple times a game, Harburg would then Throw you know, deep. run, run, yeah. run, and then take a shot to Lloyd or whatever. Like but you understood the offense being bad last year can be easily explained. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is what, like when I went through personnel and this offensive line, it's not very good, but it's not. I mean, they're, they're good enough yeah. to to be better than this. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I am perplexed at. And again, this is what is so frustrating for people. People. Are, are all about, you got to show them, they get the process. As much as we're frustrated with hearing it, they yeah. get that this is a process, I suppose. But you got to show us progress. And uh, the, it just feels like all of a sudden the arrow is going the wrong direction. Well, we're, we're playing bad football is why. It's, just, yeah. it's one thing to not win. It's another thing to play bad football. You know, like we're missing extra points were you know like it just feels like we're doing things that it just you know oh man it's 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 hard to watch sometimes that we just can't we just can't i don't know we can't just let it rip or something you know like go out there and just it just feels like we are always like we just make it too hard on ourselves or something yeah i, I don't it's just I don't really know what else to say about Dylan. I hope he's okay. It just, this is. At least it wasn't shoulder. It looked like it was, it was back. his back because he ran back out, back out there and it looked like it locked up on him. But, uh, but it's weird. It's like he didn't really get hit in the back. So it was almost like he fell, like he hit and he fell hard on the side. Right. So it might just be like one of those things where like your hip gets caught, like hits, you get a stinger and it's just like, yes. you know, it might take a couple of weeks just to be. And it's good that there's a bye week now. So he's got two weeks to get, oh, to get healthy. I mean, it's a bye week. So that's the other thing. I mean, the people are good. This is going to not going to be very, you thought the, this is going to be the Indiana week after the Indiana game where it was upset. People are now going to be stewing in this for, for two weeks. Oh, wow. And it just, it's a, it's a gr last week was a missed opportunity to beat Ohio state this week. You have your most winnable game left on the schedule at home, and you go out there and you put that performance out there. And I just would, with Dylan, though, it's just, I don't, it's how I thought this season would go is just not, it's not progressed how I thought it would go for him. And what's weird is I still am not, I've not lost faith in him at all, but. He's not like you said. He's in a funk. He's not playing well, and it's gonna be interesting to see how they get him out of this. Yeah, he's just he's got to get healthy, and he's got to. I think he's got a lot of tools. Yep, he's got a lot of skills. We saw we just we saw what he can do when he's when he's comfortable, and he's locked in. Right, like he, he looked really good for for a handful of games, but he is a young guy and this was kind of inevitable. You're going to have some sort of, you know, yeah. like slump regression, whatever you want to call it. But like they, in this moment, they've got to help him by running the ball and pretend like they got to make things a little bit cleaner for him. That makes sense. Like a little less of this, like he, I don't want to see him running around. You know, he's not a mobile guy. Like we don't need him in scramble mode every day. Like he, he needs to just, he needs to have the pocket clean through play action, running the ball, and just like they just got to be crisper with like what they want him doing with it. Before we move on to the defense, I mean, I think right now I bet people are, you know, uh, the, the easy thing is to come on here and, uh, you know, rip Satterfield and call for his head. I don't, I don't, I've never, I never feel overly comfortable doing that kind of stuff. And I don't know what to like. I do, I think, yeah. do I think there's a better chance? Is there a, is it more likely that he's, on staff or off staff next year or not calling plays next year. I'd say it's more likely he's not calling plays next year, but I, I don't, I don't know all. I don't know enough about football to be able to get into like a legitimate deep football discussion. I just know what 
what things are supposed to look like or what things don't look like. And it's just, it's, and the proof's in the pudding. I mean, this team is, this is, this is now on the short list of like bad offenses that Nebraska's had in we, a we long time. We don't score points. That's, that's what we don't. They don't score points. And we and, got the 20 today, which was like good for us. <laughs> yes. If you'd have told me before the game that they were going to score 20 points, they were going to score three touchdowns. I would have, re- I'd have liked our chances a lot, given how the defense has had been a week, the week before, and then given the fact that this is a UCLA team. I'll give you a stat. I mean, it, you, you do realize that you know, a, you know we scored three touchdowns and the defense gave up twenty. Yeah, that, that's that number. Like, think <laughs> about know, that. You know, they gave up twenty, right? Right. So, like, in a way, the defense. Well, they should have. It should have been. I mean, you you score three touchdowns and you make an extra point, like high school teams do. Yes. You should win twenty-one twenty. And then we throw a pick six. and you throw the pick six and you miss the extra point and that's how it's twenty-seven to twenty. But it is disappointing, obviously. What well, let, let's let's take a break, and then I'll tell you about what what is a couple of things that's disappointing with uh with with the defense. Uh, got to tell you about pillow windows and doors. Love it when people come to me and talk about seeing the the commercial and and because I love the people with with Pella and the work they did in my home. Debbie Vince and the crew helped find the perfect fit for our home during the free in home consultation. The showroom is fantastic. It's a great place to start for those that are trying to figure out what they want to do with their home. Uh, and then the installation experts they were professional, courteous, on time. And they left their house cleaner than they found it. Call the Omaha or Lincoln showroom or go to PellaOmaha.com to find out how you can get a hundred dollars and new windows and doors starting at $122 a month. That's PellaOmaha.com. And we're brought to you by the Brickway Cuts Bike, Lucky Bucket Family, great brewery, great distillery. Been drinking the Oktoberfest, get the Brickway Pilsners going. We got the Brickway Bourbons. We got the Cuts Bike whiskey and bourbons. Again, literally last night, my brother and I, it, it, we were we were having some whiskey on the rocks. This Brickway Bourbon is just, it is so delicious. And you need to check them out. Go to the... Uh, Go, go check out the brewery and distillery at uh, the Omaha La Vista area, four blocks south, 120th and Giles. We're big fans of the Brickway Cuts Bike Lucky Bucket family. And we're brought to you by Peerless Energy Systems. Uh, they are the Solaire authorized distributor for Nebraska and Iowa. They have some of the best air compressor needs. Uh, they can fulfill the air compressor needs for you, whether you're in manufacturing, food processing, utilities, transportation, refineries, uh, you work in a body shop or countertop maker, automotive, car dealer, whatever. For any and all air compressor needs, go to peerlessenergy.com. That is peerlessenergy.com. So, but with the defense, you do realize that heading into today, there are 133 Division one football teams. UCLA ranks 133 in rushing offense. They were the worst rushing offense in the country. And they had their first hundred yard rushing game Mm -hmm. against Nebraska. They end up toting it for 139. And I, I just... I don't understand. Now, if you stop, like you said a second ago, they only gave up 20. Uh, but I don't, I I don't quite understand the last three weeks really perplexing with with the defense, just the the roller coaster nature of it and how you can look. How can you how can you be so bad against Indiana, but then stone Ohio State and hold them to one for ten on third down? And then do that to Ohio State, and then UCLA comes to town and they go six for ten on third downs in in the first half and and are on pace to put 500 yards of offense up on you like yeah. i don't what what did you see from the defense i mean to, the d line is besides ty 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 played a, a good game ty was disruptive um but like we let that quarterback yeah shimmy out for those those on those third downs like you know that's that's their job is like look you don't have to sack him every time but like you can't let him run free for it like you know right up the gut yes on us, right so there was two or three times he did it one time he takes it for 70 yards right so that's a backbreaker that's how that's mm-hmm. how you break your defenses back and that's their that's their job to stay in your lanes you don't run by the quarterback and these guys were just running up the field running right by him right um i know mcgahee whiffs on a unco- you know you're not blocked all you gotta do is trot in half speed and grab him you don't have why would you run like a million miles an hour past the guy. There's you can't even hit him anymore. Like right. you're not allowed to crush the quarterback anyway. You just got to get him. 
And we had about four of those plays. It felt like that just broke our backs on all these third downs. And so the rest of the game, right? I mean, Nick, they had 139 yards. That quarterback ran for, did he Half run for yeah. more I than mean, that? I right. think he ran for 80 yards, right? So I don't think we we gave up a lot on the ground, actually. We just got out of our lanes and like we wouldn't sack this quarterback. You know, you got to get the guy. So I think our D-line, you got to chalk up the L to our D-line for not like just doing their job of keeping the guy in the pocket or making the play. And then our our secondary, it felt like we were having a tough time. Again, it was a bad. It was a. It felt like a. Once again, the secondary had a bad day again. Yeah. Um, the linebackers weren't like good or anything. They they weren't. It's just like the secondary was like they really were getting not playing well, and the in the D line sands tie were were not good either. But the. Yeah, there were two, at least I'm looking in the first half, there were two third downs where the quarterback escaped and ran. There was one in the, there was a third and four that was just an incredibly stepped up and went yeah. and got to the sideline uh, for 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 the, a third third down conversion. Then he had the one long run a, as well. Uh, but no, there's clearly a, when when this D-line, for this deep, for, for the defense to play well, the defensive line has to like, not just play well, they got to dominate. Yeah. And the games where it doesn't feel like they dominate, things things slide pretty pretty quick. But you know they set the tone right away. UCLA did. They they win the toss. They take the ball. Uh, they they hold the ball. They have a fourteen play, sixty eight yard, eight minute long drive that ends in three points. And that kind of just set the tone for. For the day, but then we go three and out. That's the just, problem. Like, you, 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 we're playing right into their hands, and then they go score on us, right? So, like, it's like, yeah, because in their second drive, they have they have an eleven. Their second drive of the game, eleven plays, eighty five yards, held the ball for six and a half minutes, and score seven points. They have the great call at first and goal at the ten. They run the the yeah, the screen. fake the fake reverse screen to the running back. Just great call. Uh, but so now, now your defense has been on the field for 15 minutes. Your offense has been on the field for like a, a minute and a half, and you're down 10 nothing. And again, ne- Nebraska's just not quite built to be able to deal with that because then that that's then you have the three and out. It was going to be the the Boo Birds came out, but the unsportsmanlike conduct keeps that drive alive, and then Nebraska's offense is able to score. I mean, think if they they were about went three and out again. Our that's where like been the, tired. We've been tired. So I, I just uh, yeah, it's hard. It's it's interesting when the dust settles. You know, once the you know in the second half, outside of the long the the long play action fifty yard touchdown. That Buford got burned. I think Buford was thinking it was the guy who was going to run a post. He runs a corner, and they they score a touch. Outside of that play, the the offense gave. So what I said, they had 248 yards in the in the first half of offense, uh, yeah. uh, and they finished with 358. So they 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 only had 110 yards of offense in the second half. Yeah. Uh. And then, and time of possession flipped where Nebraska ended up winning the time of possession by about a minute, which is pretty remarkable considering yeah, they, how bad the early portions of, of the game that, that looked. So, yeah, you know, it's funny. You, you're, you're frustrated with the defense, but when the dust settles and you go, they get, they, we, we have such, the, the Nebraska's margin for error is so thin. Yeah, they have to play. They, perfect. They yeah. have to be perfect. Yeah, they got to keep teams under fourteen. That's the, it's like if they keep them under fourteen, we win. If they don't, we're rolling the dice. And this was a game that we, you know, we, we scored twenty, and we threw a pick six. Right. That's it. Like I mean, it's bizarre to say that, but like that's kind of our margin for error. It's almost nothing. This defense has to play pretty much perfect because our offense won't score points. Yeah, they just have a ceiling. It's like fourteen to twenty points is kind of their that's their range. It, it feels like it feels like if it gets north of twenty, it doesn't feel like we're winning those games, which is crazy. Like to think if if Nebraska has to score twenty one points, they're probably not going. It's not going to happen. 
It's a bad sign. And that's, that's what I think we're realizing is it didn't feel like the offense was going to be a huge problem this year. No. And it's just slowly turned into a, a team that like, we just, we cannot put points on the board. It puts too much pressure on the defense to be perfect, you know, and then, I don't know. It, it's it's hard. It's hard to play defense when you know you're behind. Yeah, right? and and that's what happened. I mean, yeah. I mean, it got down twenty seven to seven. You're down twenty seven to seven. I mean, that to, to UCLA, a team that was two and five, and I I, I don't know. I, I guess this give, is, the, give the defense credit. They like they gave them the offense a chance to get back into it. Like yep. as as the offense finally got a few a few scores, like. They were getting stops and gave him a chance. I mean, two minutes, you know, two minutes and 30 seconds. To the, and ball. the ball, like Harbor actually kind of like moved the ball down the field more than a lot of other two minute drills in the past. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say the offensive line protected for him in that last, those last, you know, three or four passes. And, you know, he just. And because even the last, the last play of the game is just an unfortunate, I mean, he's throwing it, it into double coverage there, but you're kind of like, I mean, there's 40 seconds left and you're yeah. down seven. Like you can't like not try to rip it in there. And it's just a, I mean, Raiden gets hit, the ball goes up in there, it hits his knee and then the guy catches it. It's just, that's kind of like the, the nature of how that went. But yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. How was your confidence? If, yeah, let's say it's an incomplete pass. What's your confidence we're, we're going? No, for? zero. I mean, I, I, I just I, felt uh, like I didn't have it, much confidence. My, if I'm being real, like I'm a Husker fan, and I'm rooting for us to get in. I'm like, and I'm always hoping like, we can do it, right? I'm cheering for us to do it. But like, what do I believe? What would I bet my life on? Like, I bet my life that we weren't going to score. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. That, that's, that's what oh, even, you, even, uh, even in the midst of the comeback, I never felt that's, I mean, but if Dylan's back there, I actually feel very different. Like with with, with Harburg, yeah, with two with and a half, Harbor, uh, it's different. If that were Dylan, with that much time, I would feel different. But with Harburg, there, I was like, you know, we come out of it. Didn't we come out of it and like, you know, run a zone read, zone read, rush up to get a playoff before the two minute warning, and then throw it, an it's incomplete. incomplete. So now it's third and eight with one fifty seven, and then left. Harburg runs out of bounds and takes a two yard loss. And then they luckily uh, somehow he finds Nair. B B Barney runs. Raiden runs the whole the yeah. the guy deep and and, and Nair gets take, open. Did we have to take a timeout too uh, or something? Yeah, it was it was. We could take a timeout coming out of like a, a stoppage, and I was like, "What just happened?" Like, I know it's uh. So this is interesting. I mean, I don't know how you want to kind of wrap this up here, like just the big picture element of this thing now. How the confidence level people have, I mean, it's, I don't know how your confidence couldn't be shaken with, with this team that where, where things are, where, how things are progressing. Like, I, again, I've, I've always, you just, people want to feel like the, you're taking steps in the right direction. And I just, when you zoom out big picture from, you know, where, where are we year to date and, you know, from last year till this year. I don't feel like they've taken a, a step forward. And then think about that that Colorado game. I don't that they, they are unequivocally regressing from that point. And is that people got film on Dylan and this offense, and now all of a sudden the chess match is unfolding and sat and those guys are not winning? Is is the pressure of this defense having to be perfect getting to them a little bit? They, uh, they look a little worn down. They do. They do. They do. Our secondary looks worn down. Um, but here's what's frustrating, though. I mean, I was ready because I knew we were recording tonight. I was ready to have a celebratory, like, the sun came up today. I'm, I'm drinking coffee, and I'm thinking, God, Nebraska has a great opportunity to win today. They'll be at six wins. And while the bar has been lowered to a ridiculous level for Nebraska football, everybody should view that as unequivocal, the absolute progress. You get a huge monkey off your back, no matter what you have, you're going to a bowl. And maybe then for the first time in a long time, this team could play kind of free and loose down the stretch because you got six wins. And to, to go from like that to how I'm feeling now is just is frustrating. And now you got to bask in it in, in two weeks. 
I mean, where do you, I mean, how do you, do you disagree that like, when you think about, do you feel like there's been progress? I did. <laughs> so did I. I did. And, and I just feel like we've hit some sort of, we've hit some sort of wall. And the problem with that is I feel like we are a kind of a veteran team. I mean, I look at all of our defensive yes, guys. It's an old team. But, you know, I guess we do have a young quarterback. So I, I don't want to, like, say anything definitive because I kind of don't know. I'm like, what what is this? I don't know. I think we got three games. I do believe we can win one of these three I games. I do, too. But I... I but you can, you can easily, easily lose all three. Yeah, on paper right now, we're worse than all three of these. Well, because you're playing... Okay, you're going to go play at USC. A ro It's going to be a roadie. And they're better and, than us. And they're, and they're offensively, they're talented. And yeah. Lincoln Riley, pretty good, okay? Yeah. And then you're playing Wisconsin and Iowa, who, I'm sorry, has owned you yeah. for a decade now yeah and iowa looks good and so yeah i mean it, it's that's what's hard it's like yeah they could win that they, they could they could win those games that's what i was talking to my my nephew last night we're having family over and he made the comment he's like i think nebraska could win out and i'm like i mean they could but it's way more likely that they lose out yeah i mean it's like like we we said we're probably going to lose to ohio state now we played well and barely lost like yes that's sort of we're closer to that than we are like we're playing ucla like it's it's a coin flip we should win we should like it doesn't really feel like that right now with iowa sc and wisconsin it feels like they have a, a way better chance of winning than we do at oh, this yeah. point and that's the that's the bad thing it's not a 50 50 well, and and you wonder again what did we when we were the other day when we were writing down concerns confidence and psyche was st is still at the top of the list yeah and you 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 wonder now they responded last now they lost but they responded this is this feels like as big of a gut punch this loss feels like it's as big of a gut punch wind out of your sails loss as the indiana loss does mm -hmm. and they got to sit in it for two weeks where is i i do worry about that yeah, they need Dylan to be back and be healthy. They they can't go to SC with Harburg. No. I mean, they may have to, right? Like, but I'm saying, like, I just think it's not like to have a legitimate chance to win some of these games, I think you gotta have Dylan because he gives us oh, he just gives us so much more. And I also think for our fans. I, I think if Dylan's not playing, it will do like our fans are are close to checking out. <laughs> I think I, I personally think I mean, I think all the people that were calling for Dylan to get benched are crazy. What do they think? The, like you guys are crazy. This you, is the you number guys, one quarterback. You I mean you're crazy. If you think Heinrich Harburg is a better option right now than Dylan Rail. I think you're you're crazy in a, on a variety of levels. Uh, I love I love uh, the the effort Heine Heine's given us and he's a he's a nice player for us that he'll do whatever we ask and he he played his butt off last year. But like we got to watch Heine for a season. Like we know what we're getting, right? We just Yeah. They'll not have a revisionist history on. I mean, they got Nebraska yeah. led the country in turnovers by a significant margin. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I think those people are, are nuts. The, real quick, one thing, even though it's two for two on the season for working, I, please. That throwback. That throwback pass, stop it. It's too dangerous. It Why is the we? most dangerous thing to gain 10 yards. Yeah. That's what's so funny. It's like, usually, like, a throwback pass is like, all right, we're going to uncork one and try to score. It is. It has gained 10 yards. And Dylan, I mean, Dylan had to catch. It was kind of an amazing play, like almost like turn and two, where he yeah. had to catch. I bet, like, the the color guy was talking about on TV, like, I don't know his hands on the seams oh, and get it down, and Banks has to make, like, a traffic catch. Yeah, that, that no more of that. That's but that, is, that in some ways is a <laughs> yeah. nutshell of, our, of, of Nebraska's offense. It's like when they run a toss sweep throwback pass, they gain 10 yards, and it is a ton of work. Yeah, it's too good. We're we're a little too predictable right now. It record through the first twenty one games for Nebraska's past five coaches. First twenty one games, Bill Callahan was eleven and ten. 
Bo Pelini was 14 and 7. Mike Riley was 13 and 8. Scott Frost was 8 and 13. And Matt Rule is 10 and 11. It just people are there's people are frustrated, and I I completely understand how they're frustrated. It's because it's not it's not looking how you you know it needs to look. Yeah, it's just like we could play a crisper f- brand of football. It doesn't always mean you win, but like I do think it matters how you play, and like we just are. We just there's something off about us right now. There's just there's a, kind of felt like to be honest with you, it just yeah, like there's been and it doesn't make any sense that there's just been kind of something off about the team since the Colorado game. A little bit, yeah. And it just doesn't you you would have thought the complete opposite. Like I think one of the exciting things about that game was like, okay, could this be finally like a launching point for for Nebraska to like really really catch catch fire here yeah. and it just they didn't look they've they've really not played well since that game yeah. they're going to be kicking themselves about the illinois too like oh, the, oh the illinois the, it, and ohio state ohio state i mean <laughs> today's hard to i mean you, you uh, uh, th- that uh, game should have been in a, we should have it should have been farther away than it the, was. i was gonna say we it's were. it's weird how that game ends one score that game was closer to being a a 21 yeah. point win for they UCLA two field goals that like they could have easily been and the, the, I mean the, if it wasn't for their unsportsmanlike conduct penalties which by the way I never I feel like I never got a great replay on some of them well the one guy the number two I forget his name uh their D end he like came at our bench you know taunting and the fact that he wasn't complaining, you know, he was given the a lot. He was my bad. I hate that. Like, there well, was a lot of my bad. Well, of course That's it's your bad. bad. And then they give him a touchdown, and he's five at, high five in the defense as they're coming off, hitting him with the my bad, my bad, my bad. I can't stand that. But how bad? The, some of those unsportsmanlike conduct penalties were were pretty bonehead. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, it's going to be a uh, it, it's going to be a long couple of weeks here, man. I'm I'm interested to hear what's the, what's the issue with Dylan? Because that's going to be, that's still in like, it makes a huge difference psychologically. I think for the fans and for the team to know, like, is he going to be there? Even though he's a little banged up, he gets, this is a good week for a buy too. Like, yes. Is it just banged up? Now he met with the media and taught like, I don't, so I don't know if there was, well, he tried to go back in. Yes. He tried to go so in. It can't and be, like, ah, you know, like, it, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's going to be something where all of a sudden, like, uh, He's got a broken bone and his whatever, and he's out for. I don't. I don't necessarily think it's. It doesn't seem like that. It's like a back and a hip or something. I think right? he just got so, banged up, and so sometimes that's just like I need ice for a week. And you're yes, and I need to t- take some time off here. But yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, it's not good. I mean, again, I, you. It was interesting to talk and see. Matt Rule looked like there was not a lot of. Uh, not a lot of confidence and swag from Matt Rule in that post game which you understand, but that that looked like a guy that was that was a little shook to me. Yeah, we'll see if he's got some answers because this is where this is where if you're a coach and you don't got answers, like the rest of us, we're out. We're out of answers. We don't know. Like, right. This is where hopefully he's got something that he understands. The rest of us don't. All right. So that concludes. Sincerely. With regards, Nick Ba and Bo Root. And Abraham Lincoln. And should Abraham put, Lincoln. Should we, so we put, put it in the it, drawer? Put it in the drawer, <laughs> and we'll see if we want to mail it out tomorrow. Should we, should we, should we think about it? Let's think about Let's it. Take a- hey, Heard at Sports Network production.